So let's talk about how to finish the Crazy Eights dishcloth. We've knit this one, and just to show you, before you've seamed it together, this is what it looks like. And I find that if, when you lay it flat of its own accord, it shows like one more wedge could fit in, that seems to work really well at that point to seam it together. Because remember, you're going to cinch up the inside there. And when you cinch up the inside, that brings that together. And it makes a nice flat little dishcloth. If you knit that extra wedge so that it meets completely before you seam it, I, it seems to me that once you seam it and use it, it becomes floppy, almost like a, a, has a frill to it. And that's not my favorite. I like it to be nice, stay nice and flat when you're using it. So that's how I do it. At, the, at that, that's the point when I know I've had enough. And in this case, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I've got eight wedges. Sometimes you do need nine to get to this point, and that's fine. It just has to do with the yarn you're using, the needles, and the tension you're knitting at. So whatever works. So at this point, you've bound off, and when you bind off, you want to make sure that your bound off edge is really nice and loose. And the reason is because your cast on edge is very stretchy and your bind off edge is not very stretchy. If you do bind off too tightly, this edge becomes much smaller than this one. And then when you seam it, it becomes really apparent where you seamed because it gets kind of wonky where it's drawn in on that circle instead of making a nice smooth circle. So my advice, first of all, bind off nice and loosely, way, loose, way more loose than you normally would. Then you'll have both of your ends to the inside, and we're going to seam it together with mattress stitch. And I'll get a little closer to show you that. So I've started by picking up the tail on my cast on edge and thread it onto a tapestry needle. Now going to the other side, the bind off edge, I'm going to go inside my first stitch there and I'm going to fish around and look for the loop that is inside. Like there's your bind off loop and when I go down inside I find the end of this loop inside there and I pick that up. Then on this side I go into my first stitch my first full loop, and I also am looking for a stitch from inside that I can attach to. Again with this, now I go to the next loop. I go inside and I pick up a loop from there and pull through. So you can see what's happening is these ends are just getting butted up against each other rather than seaming out and making uh, stitches. It will be a completely invisible join this way. So continuing.
See what a nice seam that makes. And to finish it, you can just go through a, two of the pearl bumps on the adjacent rows that connect to each other. And there you go. You've got a pretty perfect join. Now to there. finish, just weave in your ends, back and forth, and cut off. You don't need to use knots. Now for the inside, you'll thread it onto the tapestry needle. And you're going to go through the pearl bumps at the very edge. Or I should call them the garter stitch bumps. All the way till you're back at the beginning. And now you're cinched up nice and tight. And again, you'll just weave in your edges, or weave in your ends, and cut them off. I like to actually go around this circle one more time, and you can go a row further back. Just to kind of reinforce it. before I weave in my ends. And that's all there is to it. You can see that it lays nice and flat. It's not too obvious where it's seamed because it's the same length as the rest of the cloth. I think advanced knitters like to sometimes start with a provisional cast on where they keep their first cast on stitches live. Then they knit the entire thing and at the end they put those two needles together and graft it together with a line of, of uh, knitting uh, like Kitchener stitch they use. And that makes a seamless join where you can't see the seam at all. No way can you find it. So. But I like mattress stitch just fine. I hope that clarifies how to knit and finish the Crazy Eights dishcloth. Happy knitting! <laughs>